Hello, Seattle. Hey, uh, Seattle. How's, it how's it going? So, we're really excited to be here to speak with you all. And uh, unfortunately, we come right after the keynote. And that means that we're following Mitchell and Armand, and it's just like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> so, anyway. And I know that the reason you all are here is, is because you want to hear about how we coaxed Terraform into making our VMware virtual machines. But first, I'd like to tell you a short story. Uh, before I started at, at Petco, I worked at a, a place that's much smaller. In fact, one of our teams was the size of the entire engineering organization. And that's where I first learned the word Terraform. There were uh, two engineers, uh, Alex and Rod, and they came to me one day and said, hey, we're using this tool called Terraform, we want to show it to you. So I thought, great, they showed it to me, and I thought, man, this is great, you, you did it, infrastructure is code. Uh, and so that's our presentation, thank you. Uh, <laughs> no, so, and what happened is, at, like at any of these smaller organizations, uh, uh, for whatever reason, I got moved out, I got put into a different team, and I, I sort of put Terraform on the back burner and uh, develop this deep love affair with, uh, with Vagrant. Uh, so anyway, fast forward, a, um, fast forward a couple of years and a, a little bit of career success and, and uh, I get this phone call one day. Okay, it's, it's a recruiter. Okay, and they say, hey, we've got something for you. We, we looked at your LinkedIn. We think you're the right guy for the job. It's a big, big company. It's Petco Animal Supplies. So I thought, all right, let's, let's, uh, let's give it a try. And, um, and I knew that having been introduced to, to, uh, to Terraform, I felt like there was still some work left to be done. And I, and I got a chance to go back and reinvigorate that and uh, make it happen for Petco. So, uh, but once again, scale was the thing. It was, it was cool to do it for the smaller organization. It's a lot more meaningful in my mind to do it when it's for a large organization. So I wanna take a minute uh, to introduce Petco. We'll introduce ourselves and then uh, and we'll continue along our journey. Yep, there you go. So I'm Chad Prey and I've been interested in automation since the Slayer's Jumpstart days. Any of you People out there use Jumpstart? Yeah, Jumpstart. Uh, anyway, so from there I went to uh, CF Engine 2, then to Puppet, back to CF Engine 3, Chef, Ansible, back to Chef. And those, those uh, configuration management tools, they, they change things. But really, there was a, a, a paradigm shift. It was like when Warp was invented, when you first saw uh, first Vagrant, and then Terraform. And we would just crush tickets using these tools. So uh, my goal, I, I wanna keep learning daily. I'm doing my best to remain helpful. And uh, I would definitely say that the, the PECO team uh, has, has been my inspiration for this. A Couple of fun facts about me is uh, I'm a senior novice AMA District 38 dirt bike racer. And I'd like to say I'm a pet owner, a pet parent, but I'm not because the cat that we have actually adopted us. So does that count? Anyway, uh, so enough about me. So I am Paul Grinstead. I am the DevOps architect for Petco. Uh, a little bit about me. I started in IT when I was 17 years old as an ock engineer for a really large ISP uh, based in Los Angeles. I remember walking in this data center and I was just a kid going, Wow, look at all this equipment. What is all this? Even in 1996, those of you who now know how old I am, um, I completed, I struggled with system life, patching, decommissioning, and I think back of all the roles I have, and that seems to be the common theme. Now I, unlike Chad, I've worked for big Fortune 500 companies, some of the biggest in the world. So that's been my whole career. It's always been big, big orgs. Being in a data center wasn't very new to me. I grew up, in telecom, my parents both work for the industry, and I have a deep root in design and architecting. Um, I've been for, with PECO for about a year, and it's been an amazing journey, but not just for us as, as employees, but for our team. 
we have these moments where you have this high five or this huggable moment where you've worked so hard to get something done, you get it deployed on production, you're like, man, that was awesome. And then you have these other Debbie Downer moments where you're like, man, that stinks, that just doesn't work. So then there's this last moment, and those of us that are pet parents know when you ask your pet, specifically a dog, and it looks at you, turns its head, and he says, you want me to do what now? So there's those type of moments too. Uh, so a couple facts about me. I have two chocolate labs, Shelby and Beanie. You'll see them in our presentation. We are a pet company, so I figured we'd throw our animals in there. And uh, I build and race cars as a hobby, so if you're ever in Southern California, roll up, throw a bad rev. So Petco has been a part of pets and pets' parents since 1965. The founder opened up a mail order vet supply company in San Diego. Uh, over the past 50 years, Petco has been the trusted source for quality, premium pet products and services. We provide these products, services, and advice that keeps pets physically fit, mentally alert, and emotionally happy. Everything we do is guided by our vision. Healthier pet, happier people, better world. And this is, this is everywhere at our company. You walk through the halls, it's plastered everywhere. And it, it's so important to us. But the thing we have to remember is Petco is a very large corporation, but it very much feels like a family. We're very integrated all together. We all know each other. So I'm gonna hand it back to Chad. Okay, so you probably really wanna hear more about Petco, right? Uh, probably not, okay. So let's get into the code. One of the things that, um, uh, that I wanted to mention is there, there are a lot of you out there who are doing, you're all in the cloud, you're already in these patterns, and so, but for a lot of us, there's, there's Terraform for the rest of us. There's like the cool kids, and then there's the rest of us, you know, and uh, you know, the cool kids are sitting at the table at uh, having their lunch, and this presentation is for the rest of us, right? We, we're solving real problems day to day with with the tools that, that we're using. And it's, uh, so let's get into it. First of all, uh, we have a slide for you. I'm not gonna read it. We hope to answer these questions by showing you what we've done. There's no smoke and mirrors here. Uh, and one of the things is, uh, when we were presenting our deck, we ran through it, and one of our engineers said, that code is super old. He's like, I'm embarrassed to, for you to show it. So. Um, if you notice it, you know, make sure you point it out, you know, tag us, whatever. But for sure, that also tells you how fast this space is moving, right? Because uh, there's a release train, you better get on it, you're gonna get left at the station. So, uh, I kind of, I don't wanna say cyber stalked, but um, I, I took an interest in, in what Mitchell and Armand were saying online. And I thought, uh, you know, I found some really great quotes and I was going to uh, present those quotes to you. But when we were going through uh, finding logos for HashiCorp, we found this, which is the, the DAO of HashiCorp, which you heard Armand mention in his presentation. And it really resonated with us. We just took this directly, this content is directly from HashiCorp. So when you're selecting software, you need to be sure that the product offers the, the, the reason that you purchased it, right? It, it has to do that thing that you bought it for. Uh, however, some corporations, some companies, they, they want to have something like a, a lengthy pro-serve engagement or lock you in somehow. And oh yeah, we also solve your problem, but it's almost like an afterthought. And we, we, were, we, we get a little bit frustrated when we find tools like that. And then the last thing is, uh, is it's so refreshing to be able to engage with a company that everybody wants to use those tools. Everyone wants to use the tools. It's really wonderful. And it, it changes the way that we work. So uh, our squad values. And I made this coffee mug and all the people who are part of what we call the Infrastructures Code Squad received one of these mugs. It has the PECO logo on one side and then uh, equity at every step, which is one of our goals. We want to add equity at every, every step. And these, these HashiCorp tools, the stuff that you're being shown today, it, it match our values and how we work. 
and you'll see these themes, hopefully you'll see if we've done a good job, you'll see these teams repeat throughout the presentation. One of the things is automation creates opportunities to reduce operating, uh, operating costs without sacrificing speed or quality. One other thing is you no longer have the luxury of holding on to outmoded mindsets. Industry is not gonna reward you for being the BOFH for your organization. That ship has kind of sailed. The customer demands a certain level of responsiveness and level of service, even your internal customers. As service offerings become more commoditized, the customer doesn't have as much incentive to stay with the brand. They can just leave. Oop, I'm gone. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm a fan of Peter Drucker, Steve Covey, Gene Kim. I have a copy of the Agile Manifesto principles hanging in my cube, and I can go on like this. I, I literally sit in front of him, and he just talks all day. That's just, <laughs> just the way it is. So we told leadership that we could improve quality and go faster, and they said, show us. A typical system that we used to build, uh, just the system build, took around five days. We now do that in minutes. Systems with low RPO, RTO were fretted over. We had full backups, lots of management, and now we just, re, we just rebuild them. We tell our customers, push the button. Uh, one of the things that you may hear in your organization, I know that we hear it, is I just want to get my job done. And what this is, what I'm hearing the developers say is that they want to close their ticket. It's based on their lensing, the way that they're seeing their problem. PTFE allows the organization to leverage these tools to do that work that is abstracted from a developer so that maybe they don't want to think about InfoSec. They're, they're worried about their software architecture. They don't want to think about CMDB patching compliance. Forget it. They just want to go fast. So we built that into the deployment, and the PTFE tools allowed us to do that. Uh, so PICO has made a huge capital investment that hasn't been fully realized. I know a lot of you here are, are likely running VMware or have other on-prem on solutions that you guys are that using and trying to get all the value out of before you uh, transition into something else. And there's a lot of life left in those systems if we can squeeze that value out using these excellent tools. Uh, there are workloads that are better in the cloud, and I, I will admit that. Um, BI, you know, it's gonna be tough to do BI on-prem. Uh, but there are also workloads that are better on-prem than in the cloud. And so that's why hybrid became our obvious choice, and you'll see why uh, PTFE uh, became part of that. I tend to, uh, I tend to avoid jargon, and uh, I don't assume that people know what I'm going to talk about. And I wanted to introduce this, which is ironic, because uh, we're with Petco, and we're going to be telling you about the... <laughs> Uh, so, uh, obviously, you know, pets, they're, you, you fret over them, you worry about them. Cattle is, it's a different life cycle. You, you, don't, you don't have to take as much care. Uh, the demo we're going to show makes use of this cattle not pets pattern. And ultimately, this pattern lowers the threshold for things like operating system and application re uh, application refreshes by building equity. So you're, you're not going to be applying OS patches or application refreshes directly to the system. You just rebuild the whole thing wholesale. And it, and it, and it lowers your uh, total cost of ownership. At the heart of the infrastructure's code squad is a team uh, committed to DevOps automation and they crush it with GitLab. I just wanted to mention that uh, when we're talking about our, our PECO toolbox, our, uh, our customers love us. They love us for bringing it on-prem. Like we did something. All we did was say, hey, this is really cool. You guys should use it. And they're like, oh, thank you. So, and we're glad. Our other on-prem tooling looks likely it's the same stuff all you other large corporations have. But we've chosen to look at, at those resources a little bit differently. Uh, what APIs do, we, do they provide? How can we deeply integrate with them? How can we hook them together and safely provide these resources to our internal customers? We got creative, and it's going to be an interesting year. Uh, we chose HashiCorp tools, 
And, and the reason why, I asked our team, how can we democratize our platform? The team answered, you democratize by empowering teams. Terraform Enterprise allowed us to satisfy our customers' change requirements and deliver code quickly. We can do both. You want, you want, uh, you want your, everything tracked in service now? Fine, we'll do it. It's just we're gonna do it using their API. We're not gonna have humans go through and step by step and click through things. I see some, some uh, nodding, so thank you for that. You democratize also by reaching across silos, building trust, letting your customers know that you're along for the ride with them. There are so many things that we've done because of that little phrase, as a user. Base images got built, and like an MC Escher drawing, our tools deployed themselves. You've seen those two hands drawing one another. One of the bigger challenges to understand is the pre-work required to be able to provision self-service enterprise Terraform workspaces. There's a lot that goes into it, so you need to learn to sit before teaching stay. We worked with HashiCorp and NebulaWorks to ensure we understood what we were building out and to be sure the services were in place before buying the tools and then we executed on what, what we decided. In large corporate IT, good took tools and partnerships are very important, but implementation is equally important. We pulled together a cross-functional squad of people from DevOps, InfoSec, storage, compute, and networking, and they make up a, a group called the Infrastructures Code Squad. We made a list of problems, put them onto a Kanban board, and started tackling them one by one. There were people that initially doubted, but they started to get on board. First, seek to understand, and then to be understood. There was a lot of work to be done here. And Paul is about to show you where we are now. Thank you, Chad. So in this video demo, uh, we're gonna walk you through the process of running Terraform, inside of Terraform Enterprise uh, with VMware and Chef uh, using our CI pipeline that spits out an image for both VMware and AWS along with our IPAM DNS solution info blocks that we use. Um, the result will be a Sumo Logic collector that is managed with IAC um, that'll follow our pets, uh, cattle not pets pattern. Uh, for some of you out there that don't know or maybe a little bit curious, a Sumo Logic collector is an agent that receives the logs and metrics uh, from sources and encrypts, and compresses, and sends it off to the Sumo SaaS. Uh, our on-prem collector uh, endpoint requires configuration such as protocols and uh, ports. Managed collectors can be deployed on-prem or in the cloud. At PECO we do both, but uh, our piece was about VMware. I, I wanted to reiterate that the beginning of this, it really comes down to having executive management understand what you're trying to produce and what you're trying to do. Without that sort of level, that high level of sponsorship, you're just never gonna get anywhere. So that, that's really important for us, and thankfully for us at Petco, it worked out really well. So we use Packer, and Packer to build a custom image for VMware and for Omnis for AWS. We use a GitLab Docker runner with a custom image for Python and PowerShell. Using the vault binary, we log in with an app role to get our token. The token allows us to retrieve the secret. Those creds are used to run Packer, Chef, our CIS hardening, VMware tools, various other agents and helpers that we need. Uh, post creation, we tag it with latest, but keep the old image around in case we have some reason to rebuild. We then copy the new, new image onto the, into the content library, and we use a custom Python script that knows where to distribute the template, either VMware or AWS. Now this is all automated. We, we, we don't interact with it. This is all built in-house for us by Petco. The image we created is now a shrunken image. It's, it's a very, very small version of itself. We ran into problems in the beginning where our images would be massive, 100, 100 gigs, 200 gigs, and there's just no reason to store that kind of thing around. So we use custom Terraform, uh, a custom Terraform module written, written in house to resize the disk and to attach or resize the uh, storage. Uh, we can also attach persistent storage if we need to, depending on the application. We also call our InfoBlock Python script an InfoBlock module that takes the count and the outputs of the requested IPs and count this config can create one, two, 10, 20, however many boxes you actually need. It's just a matter of trying to figure that out. Once the server has been created, Chef will come in, bootstrap the collector based on the role, register the collector with Sumo Logic, and you're done. This is a condensed version of what's happening, so onward to our demo. 
So here we have TFE with Terraform that we've already written. Our VCS connector to GitLab has already been established along with the workspace. We use a standard Git flow. Code is committed in a branch. Branch has a pull request. And then merge in the master after approval. Our Terraform is now running its plan. Terraform builds the VMware box with CPU, RAM, disk, along with the network. These are all variables passed into Terraform and TFE. We provide this to our end users in a template form, so they are 90% of the way there. The end user only needs to provide some credentials and count, and they're off to the races. So our plan's ready, and we're going to go ahead and confirm our plan. One of the things that I do like about confirming is that it's literal. Are you sure that you really want to do this? This is the last and final step that gives our user the option of taking a step back and really think and make sure this is what you want to do. And, and all of us that have used this application all know that when you make a change and you're expecting to see one or two resources and it comes back and says 53, you're like, holy moly. So <laughs> it's that, uh, that pucker moment where you're like, oh gosh. So uh, <laughs> it's always best to, uh, to, make, a, to make a look. Uh, so you'll always have that opportunity before disaster kicks over. So I want to kind of walk you through the process of what's really happening here. The video is going to go by in a flash, but I'll try to explain. Once VMware Guest is built, it bootstraps to our Chef Master. It, it next runs the default Sumo Logic Collector cookbook and a special role which defines the type of box that it is. So we have different types of collectors in our ecosystem. The Sumo Logic RPM is installed. Default configs are written in their default directories. The recipe then places the Sumo Logic config files based on the definition, restarts the application. The cookbook then registers the, the collector with Sumo. This follows our cattle not pets pattern. Going forward, the server will not be patched. We will either decommission it or destroy it. Maybe taint the resources and with our new image to redeploy, but we are definitely not patching anymore. So that's kind of a high level of what we went through. As you can see from our last part of our demo, we can log into Sumo, and we confirm that our new collector is ready to go. We see that some of the inputs are grayed out, and this is because the, coll the collector is being ran as IAC. There is no input for anybody to come in, no matter how, how high your credentials are, to override this. And I wanted to drive this home, how easy this really, really is. With all my talking and the magic of video editing, this process is really only about two or three minutes. Granted, we have some development that has to take place, but we can, I can cut 50 of these out in 10 minutes, snap them out, send them on their way. Doesn't really matter. Now that I've shown you the Terraform, Chef, and Sumo, what do all these steps look like? Well, it looks like this. Exactly. <laughs> so we decided to render a graphic flow of this process. And I'm not going to get into the details of exactly what's happening here. Most of your workflows are going to look very similar to this. But imagine building this all this by hand, doing this three, five, ten times. As a previous systems engineer, people would ask me these questions. What image do I use? What's the next IP and gateway? What DNS servers do I use? Which version do we have to install? I don't have credentials. So, you know, it's this long, drawn-out process. You, you're constantly kicking the, the football over the fence and hope that someone else will pick it up. Building infrastructure over and over can sometimes be boring and frustrating. Setting the flags over and over, remembering the steps, creating a checklist is painful. Having human do this will cause drift and introduce inconsistencies in deployments. Using Terraform along with the rest of the Hashi tools removes these barriers for Petco. Now I'd like to thank my dog Beanie for looking super confused, because that's what it really is. And believe it or not, Writing Terraform and using their tools is easier than training a dog. But let us be serious about this. What you saw was a complete implementation of a Sumo collector, start to end without any sort of person interrupting it, doing anything of the sort. All this comes back to the what, why, and how of, of, of our presentation. Petco wanted to reduce cycle time, reduce O&M, reduce deployment pain, improve security. We were able to maximize the value of on-prem VMware and Chef investments by using quality enterprise tools with infrastructure as code that we can create a 
repeatable, maintainable system. And this, and this drives home for us every single day. This is, this, is, this is our whole reason for being here. I'll hand it back to Chad. All right, it's not all tailbacking. So there, there has to be a little bit of, uh, you know, Commander Kurtz going up the river and the horror, you know. So one of the things that you'll see is engineers need time to work effectively with this new mindset. You, you, you need to establish that mindset. You can't just give them the tool and hope that they're gonna know what to do with it. And change is hard, it's a paradigm shift. Like I said before, it's like having warp. If you were a pre, you know, uh, any Trekkie fans? Uh, okay. Uh, so there, and there are problems that you cannot anticipate. Uh, some of the policy that you've got right now, it, you're gonna get this from your, from your teams, some of the policy that they've written just doesn't make sense. Um, what will, you know, the, the, I laugh at the names of, of the, the hosts inside of Kubernetes, you know, luxurious linger, and you know, uh, you know uh, you're not gonna be able to set a server naming policy. It's just not a thing. Uh, the other thing is resource guardrails. Uh, you know, this, you, you need resource guardrails in the cloud because you're, you don't want your CFO coming down to your office saying, why did you deploy uh, 50 R5 16 XLs. You know, you just, uh, you, we just missed our quarterly objectives because of your deployment. Uh, and th this is a job for Sentinel. There's probably another talk on that, but I would definitely go and check that out. The other thing that we noticed is because of these tools, the engineer, uh, the engineers, uh, Got, they got excited and they started creating these things that, that the rest of the organization needed time to be able to digest. And so we, we like to think of this as an inchworm where you'll have people go, go out and do something and then demo retro it and pull the rest of the organization behind and it moves in this inchworm pattern. So uh, small changes delivered frequently. So Terraform did change Petco. Uh, we had a great deal of success with the business unit in 2017. And we earned their trust and our customers, they wanted in on it. So what we did was we gave them the reins. Teams are now much more engaged. They're wanting, they really want and they're willing to participate and surprise. One of the things that we noticed is we would go through our fleets of systems and we would find machines just laying around. What were these things doing? Well, when it takes five days to get a server built, they had some emergency spare servers like a cliff bar in your backpack, just in case, right? And those, those machines went away and now all of a sudden our resource utilization goes down and we're actually able to do meaningful work for those systems. Our change requests are streamlined now because of PTFE, they all look the same. It's really easy to review that the, the, our change review board, our cab is able to easily see what we're doing. So it's been over two years since I got that phone call. I'm, I'm glad I took it. We've done a lot, but there's still much more that's left to do. So PTFE and automation means we have more to work. PTFE and automations means we have more time to work on our features and initiatives. We're no longer spending so much time fretting over how we're gonna get those, those boxes stood up. And Petco is building on top of the stable platform that PTFE uh, provides. We are building equity with every step. Every module release is just a, another bit of equity. We're retail, we're a pet store, but we still write some pretty killer code. Uh, Paul and I did not do this alone. There's a bunch of people back at the shop um, the PECO leadership, I told them that, uh, I, I asked them if they would be willing to uh, trust me and Paul and the infrastructure's code team to build this and they, they said yes. Uh, also, um, if you haven't met Naomi, uh, she is a super stam. Uh, I, I don't think that we would be up here presenting to you all without her assistance. She's, she put us in touch with uh, the people that we needed and got us the information that we needed from Hashi. And then also we had some, uh, some great consultant help from uh, Nebularx and Slalom. 
And then uh, the people on uh, the right side of this slide, those are the people underneath Naomi who's a de facto member of the Infrastructure as Code team. I'd like to thank you all for your hospitality and uh, for, for your attention today. Thank you everybody for attending. Please be safe out there.